Imagine flying faster than a bullet, soaring higher than a jet, and reaching the edge of space. This is not science fiction, but the reality of hypersonic flight. Hypersonic flight is defined as flying at speeds above Mach 5, or five times the speed of sound. At such speeds, the air becomes extremely hot and thin posing immense challenges for the design and operation of aircraft. How can an aircraft withstand the intense heat and pressure? How can it maneuver and control its flight path? How can it communicate and transmit data? These are some of the questions that have fascinated and motivated scientists and engineers for decades. One of the most remarkable achievements in hypersonic flight was the X-15 a rocket-powered research aircraft that set the world's unofficial speed and altitude records in the 1960s. The rocket-powered aircraft resulted from a collaboration between North American Aviation, the US Air Force, and NASA as part of the X-Plane series of experimental aircraft. The rocket-powered aircraft was designed to explore the areas of high aerodynamic heating rates, stability and control, physiological phenomena, and other problems relating to hypersonics. The rocket-powered aircraft had some of the most advanced features and specifications of its time. It had a rocket engine that could produce up to 57,000 pounds of thrust, enough to propel it to speeds of over 4,500 miles per hour. It had a wing design that minimized drag and maximized lift, allowing it to climb to altitudes of over 350,000 feet. It had a control system that used both aerodynamic surfaces and reaction jets, enable it to maneuver in both the atmosphere and near vacuum conditions. It had an instrumentation system that recorded and transmitted vital data on the aircraft's performance and the pilot's condition. The rocket-powered aircraft was not only a technological marvel, but also a human achievement. Twelve pilots flew a total of 190 99 flights, risking their lives to advance the frontiers of knowledge and exploration. Eight of them qualified as astronauts according to the US Air Force criterion of exceeding the altitude of 50 miles. Two of them, Joseph A. Walker and William H. Knight, also met the international definition of outer space by reaching the altitude of 100 kilometers. The control system of the X-15 was sophisticated and versatile, enabling the pilot to maneuver and guide the aircraft in both the atmosphere and near vacuum conditions. The X-15 had two types of control devices, aerodynamic surfaces and reaction jets. The aerodynamic surfaces included the rudder, the elevators, and the ailerons, which controlled the yaw, pitch, and roll of the aircraft, respectively. The reaction jets included the hydrogen peroxide thrusters, which provided altitude control in the longitudinal, lateral, and directional axes. However, the control system of the rocket-powered aircraft also had coupling and interaction problems, which could cause unwanted oscillations and vibrations in the aircraft. The X-15 had to balance the use of the aerodynamic surfaces and the reaction jets, depending on the speed and altitude of the flight. The X-15 also had to switch between the aerodynamic surfaces and the reaction jets when it crossed the threshold of dynamic pressure, where the air became too thin to provide sufficient control authority. Speaking about the propulsion of the rocket-powered aircraft, it was powered by a rocket engine, which differs from a jet engine in that it carries its own oxidizer and does not depend on the air for combustion. The rocket engine used in the X-15 was the XLR-99, developed by Reaction Motors Inc. The XLR-99 could produce up to 57,000 pounds of thrust, enough to accelerate the X-15 to hypersonic speeds. However, the rocket engine also posed several challenges for the X-15 program. One of the main challenges was the limited fuel capacity of the X-15, which restricted the duration of the powered flight to only a few minutes. The X-15 had to be carried aloft by a B-52 bomber and dropped at a high altitude and speed where it would ignite its engine and begin its ascent. The X-15 had to carefully manage its fuel consumption and trajectory, as it had no backup engine or power source. Another challenge was the reliability and safety of the rocket engine, which was prone to malfunctions and explosions. The X-15 pilots had to deal with several emergencies and aborts caused by engine failures, such as loss of thrust, loss of control, and loss of stability. For example, on November 
15, 1967, pilot Michael J. Adams was killed when his X-15 went into a spin and broke apart after a series of engine and electrical problems. Moving on to the aerodynamics of the X-15, it was designed to fly at speeds and altitudes that exceeded the capabilities of conventional aircraft. The X-15 had a sleek and streamlined shape with a sharp nose, a thin fuselage and a low aspect ratio wing. The X-15 also had a variable incidence tailplane, which could be adjusted to optimize the lift and drag of the aircraft at different speeds and angles of attack. However, the aerodynamics of the X-15 also presented several challenges for the X-15 program. One of the main challenges was the high aerodynamic heating that the X-15 experienced at hypersonic speeds. The X-15 had to withstand temperatures of up to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit on its surface, which could damage or melt the structure and the instruments. The X-15 had a heat-resistant skin made of nickel alloy, Inconel X, and a cooling system that circulated liquid ammonia through the wings and tail. The X-15 also had a special ablative coating that could protect the nose and the leading edges from erosion and ablation. Another challenge was the transition from subsonic to supersonic to hypersonic regimes, which affected the aerodynamic forces and moments acting on the X-15. The X-15 had to cope with changes in shock waves, pressure distribution, boundary layer, and flow separation, which could alter the lift, drag, and stability of the aircraft. The X-15 also had to deal with the effects of high altitude, such as low air density, low dynamic pressure, and low sound speed, which reduced the effectiveness of the aerodynamic surfaces and the control system. The rocket-powered aircraft is also formed with a sophisticated stability and control system, which enables the pilot to maneuver and guide the aircraft in both the atmosphere and near-vacuum conditions. The X-15 had two types of control devices. The materials of the X-15 were selected to withstand the high temperatures and pressures of hypersonic flight. The X-15 used various metals and alloys such as titanium, stainless steel, aluminum, and Inconel X for its structure and components. The X-15 also used composite materials such as fiberglass, epoxy, and phenolic resin for its insulation and coating. However, the materials of the X-15 also had limitations and weaknesses such as cracking, warping, and peeling, which could compromise the integrity and performance of the aircraft. The X-15 had to undergo frequent inspections and repairs and sometimes had to be modified or replaced. Another challenge was the human factor, which involved the physical and mental demands on the pilot, who had to operate the X-15 in a complex and dynamic environment. The X-15 pilot had to endure high acceleration and deceleration forces, high temperature and pressure variations, high noise and vibration levels, and high workload and stress levels. The X-15 pilot also had to cope with a limited visibility and situational awareness due to the small cockpit windows, the bulky pressure suit, and the fast-changing flight conditions. The X-15 pilot had to rely on the instruments and ground control for guidance and navigation, as well as for emergency and recovery procedures. The X-15 program was a remarkable success, achieving many milestones and breaking many records in hypersonic flight. The rocket-powered aircraft flew a total of 199 flights, reaching speeds of up to max 6.7 and altitudes of up to 354,200 feet. The rocket-powered aircraft was the first aircraft to exceed Mach 4, Mach 5, and Mach 6, and the first to fly above 100,000 feet, 200,000 feet, and 300,000 feet. Feet. The X-15 also set several world records that still stand today, such as the highest speed ever reached by a crewed, powered aircraft. 4,520 miles per hour, or 7,274 kilometers per hour, and the highest altitude ever reached by a winged aircraft, 354,200 feet, or 107.96 kilometers. The X-15 pilots were also pioneers. The X-15 had several safety features and systems, such as the ejection seat, the escape capsule, the parachute, the radio, and the beacon to protect and rescue the pilot in case of 
of trouble. However, the pilot's safety of the X-15 was not foolproof, as some pilots suffered injuries and fatalities during the program. The rocket-powered aircraft program was not without difficulties and failures, as the X-15 encountered many problems and risks in its flights. The X-15 had several incidents and accidents such as overheating, structural damage, engine failure, electrical failure, control failure, and landing mishaps, which sometimes resulted in serious consequences and losses. The X-15 had three major crashes, which destroyed two of the three aircraft and killed one of the 12 pilots. The first crash occurred on November 9, 1962, when the X-15 No. 1, 56 6670 suffered a structural failure and a fire during re-entry after reaching a speed of max 6.04 and an altitude of 246,700 feet. The pilot, Jack McKay, managed to land the aircraft on the dry lake bed, but the aircraft was severely damaged and burned. McKay survived the crash but suffered serious injuries and burns. The aircraft was later rebuilt and modified as the X-15A2 with a longer fuselage, external fuel tanks and an ablative coating. The second crash occurred on November 15, 1967, when the X-15 No. 3, 56-6672, went into a spin and broke apart during re-entry after reaching a speed of Mach 5.2 and an altitude of 266,000 feet. The pilot, Michael J. Adams, lost control of the aircraft due to a combination of engine and electrical problems, pilot error, and poor visibility. Adams was killed instantly when the aircraft disintegrated at about 65,000 feet. The aircraft was completely destroyed and scattered over a large area. The third crash occurred on June 8, 1966, when the X-15A2, 56 skidded off the runway and exploded during landing after reaching a speed of Mach 5.3 and an altitude of 280,600 feet. The pilot, Bill Dana, successfully landed the aircraft but the nose wheel failed to steer and the skids failed to break. The aircraft ran off the edge of the lake bed and hit a row of Joshua trees, causing a rupture in the fuel tanks and a fire. Dana escaped the aircraft before it exploded, but suffered minor injuries and burns. The aircraft was heavily damaged and burnt, but was later repaired and returned to service. The rocket-powered aircraft program was a landmark in aerospace engineering and space exploration, as it provided valuable data and insights on hypersonic flight and human factors. The advancement of the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo manned space missions, along with the Space Shuttle program, benefited significantly from the X-15's trials and verification of diverse technologies and methods, including re-entry heat management, reaction control, flight monitoring, and pressure suit functionality. The rocket-powered aircraft also inspired and influenced many other hypersonic research programs and vehicles, such as the X-20 Dinosaur, the X-30 National Aerospace Plane, the X X-43 Hyper-X and the X-51 Wave Rider. The rocket-powered aircraft project was a remarkable achievement, a formidable challenge, and a lasting legacy. And that's it for this video. If you love content like this, click on one of the cards on the screen. And as always, keep exploring.